Welcome back to DC. You know, everything's about politics, but when it comes to your favorite adult beverage, it's really an issue that seems to transcend just about every state house and main street across the country. Jared Deagle is the editor of drinksreform.org, and he's here tonight to talk about the politics of booze and why sometimes it's not just about taste. Jared, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I think what we need to do is we need to, we're, we're keeping a little relaxed. We've got, we got the comfy chairs tonight. Right. I want to yeah. make sure we get a couple. I asked you earlier what your favorite beverage was. It's amazing, yeah. You said you wanted a, a good <laughs> IPA, so we're going with the dogfish head here. You can't talk it. drinks policy without drinks. No, so, so, so yeah. you know, a little, little cheers. Thanks yeah. for coming in tonight. Yes, um, so, so, so tell me, first of all, I mean, drinks reform, drinkreform.org, uh, what do you guys do? So basically what we do is we look at all 50 states across the country and say what's going on with the alcohol laws and the regulations there. And we basically try to determine which states have good alcohol laws, what are bad ones, what needs to be fixed. And there's a lot of stuff out there. I, you know, it's amazing because when you and I were talking, you're from Michigan. Yeah. Um, you know, I moved, from, I moved here from Massachusetts. I lived in Pennsylvania. Really puritanical laws. Right. Um, it, it's very hesitant to get people to change. And you're seeing that around here, too, because the laws are different in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. So, I mean, what do you, I mean, what do, you do? How do you reconcile that, or how do you at least, uh, I mean, what's your role in trying to yeah. come up with some sort of happy medium? Yeah, well, we just generally try to promote laws that give consumers more choice and where they can go and buy alcohol and also free up the brewers and the distillers and the people making wine to actually do their thing, too. <laughs> and it, and it, it's harder than it sounds. I mean, there is uh, all over all 50 states. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and, and I think uh, one thing, you, I, you tweeted about this, but we're seeing some states, you know, they want to cap the amount of, uh, the, cap, cap the uh, AB, on some of these, and that's something you, you fight against as well. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, a recent example is Colorado. They allow grocery stores. To sell Colorado of all places. Right. Yeah. Of all places. Yeah. With Coors and everything there, they allow grocery stores now to sell 3.2 percent beer, mm -hmm. but if it gets to the stronger stuff like this IPA, they can't do it. They've recently changed that, and now they're hopefully going to be implementing that. So, so you know, there, there are people out there that say, you know, the, the, the laws out there are, are in place for a reason. In Pennsylvania, for example, the uh, the, the wine and spirit stores. You know, you can buy wine and, and, and you can buy wine and beer. Now in some grocery stores, right. but the state still controls alcohol sales there. Right. They say it's a deterrent. They say that those are people who know how to keep alcohol out of the hands of minors. Um, What's your takeaway on that? They keep alcohol out of the hands of people that just are responsible adults, too, yeah. is the problem. I mean, everyone knows how to ID people, and, you know, only 13 states have government run stores. So a lot of the private retailers are just as capable of making sure that that doesn't happen. Do you think, do you think states with these, these state run stores keep them on board because, you know, people are always going to buy? Alcohol, it's a money making right. profit, money making prop and setter. Oh, absolutely. I mean, in Virginia, they call the ABC stores the golden, golden goose of the Commonwealth <laughs> for a reason. So, yeah, and it just kicks off, you know, around $150 million of profit in Virginia a year, for example. And yeah. So, it's just it's hard to let that revenue stream go for politicians. So, so, for some people, the matter of convenience really is lower when it comes to making that money. Yeah, well, at least for the politicians. Yeah. I think, you know, you read, you know, these polls in Maryland, you know, 70% of the people would rather be able to get beer in grocery stores, right? But so they can't. Do you, but, you, do know. you think there's going to be ever cha any change in law when it comes to Maryland, at least? Uh, yeah, Maryland's actually right now has a task force convened to try to kind of re-study their alcohol laws and hopefully reform them. So we'll see if anything comes out of that. It's, it's often hard to get a lot of changes through these legislators. All right. Uh, tell people where they can find all your work at. At drinksreform.org. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we uh, write about it, tweet about it, and study it. There you go. It's, it's not a bad problem to have. No, it isn't. Right, exactly. Jared yeah. Dearly, thank you very much, sir. We're going to enjoy these, and we're coming back after the break here on the Final Five. <laughs>